guys, and welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be talking about something just a little bit different, but millions of us can relate to it. We're going to be discussing some tips to assist pursue and obtain our overall wellness and health in balance with gaming. The overall intention of this video, it's genuinely just to help. Help those that are having any struggles balancing their hobby with the rest of their life. The fact is, we all know people that have had to step away from gaming in general for one reason or another. Maybe they don't have enough time, they're burnt out, not having fun, feeling kind of crappy in general, maybe even a little anxious or depressed. And this topic gets close to home for me as gaming has always been something that I've loved in all stages of my life. And coming out of being a collegiate athlete to working in business management for almost six years that required me to be out of my house for 60 hours a week, I absolutely struggled with balancing gaming in my life. And while a lot of people may have put it all in a box and put it in the attic and walked away from the hobby for a while, I didn't. But I did struggle, whether that meant not playing for quite a while or completely overdoing it once I finally had a day off. And for all of you that saw my video about being let off my chain to game, uh, about a month or so ago, I've had all the time in the world, but even still, properly balancing and taking care of yourself is still an important aspect of everyday wellness that I've seen negatively impact myself and a lot of people around me. These are going to be some huge topics that have subtopics along with points and subpoints, which really could be fleshed out for hours, but this is meant to be a fun, quick, and helpful video that is easy to come back to for reference, it's very easy to share, and simple for someone to watch from start to finish. Alright, number one, this is a huge topic, it's something that many of us wrestle with. How can we know what to do with our time when we have so many choices to play? And in the collecting mindset, the addiction to always be hunting down copies of games for your collection or completing copies of your games with a box and manual. And when there are always being games to find while always having choices to play, it can lead to feeling overwhelmed, which contributes to anxiety. And on the collection side, it can lead to accumulating a huge collection on your hands that stopped being specifically about what you love, but more about quantity, rarity, value, and all of a sudden, it doesn't feel as important to you as it once did. It doesn't feel like yours anymore. As your collection grew, the significance shrunk, if that makes sense. I've definitely hit some points of frustration before and feeling overwhelmed with lack of time, not knowing how to spend that time when I did have it, and not sure how to move forward from there. Of course, selling away stuff crossed my mind, but I knew deep down and so did my wife that I would regret it because it's a huge part of me. So as simple as this sounds, I just came up with a rule to only have or keep a game in your collection if it meets the criteria. You've beaten it, not just played it, but beaten it, or it's on your list and have specific plans to play it. I also made the same rule for game boxes. Only display it if you've beaten it. This way I was able to stop, look around at my room and realize I don't need to buy more games. I still have games that I need to play. It's helped me finish a lot of classics that I've had as a collector but never beat it. And it has helped me appreciate my collection so much more because it's not just a bunch of games. They're experiences that I can associate when looking at any single one of them. Games are meant to be appreciated and played not hoarded, because then they become meaningless. As far as what you play next, how do you keep track of that? This leads into our next gaming wellness tip. Number two, document your experiences. Keeping these games meaningful to us and being organized with our plan to attack is so important. On the flip side of things, we don't want to turn this wonderful activity that can be such a carefree hobby into something that is overmanaged and way too much planning or stress behind it. No, what we want is to give our adventures and accomplishments a place to shine and also a place to build over time. Some really easy solutions to this are just get a journal or even use a Word document on your computer to list the games that you've beaten. So you have reference and get some real satisfaction of knowing not just everything you started but finished and you can have a floating list of games that you'd like to play next. You could really go to town and fill this thing out if you want or you could also just use a little separate list of maybe three to five games to choose from next time you're taking down another title. And with this system in place, I promise that beating games will provide a different sense of satisfaction and building off the first topic, it relieves the anxiety and stress that comes with games in our collection that we just don't know what to play next or what to get next as well. All right, number three, so sleep and relaxation. Now that we've gone over how to make the most of our time with games and how to keep the collection feeling significant and relevant to us, let's talk about another very important aspect of wellness. A lot of gamers and people in general have troubles with relaxation, and many of us have had issues with sleep at one point or another. Of course this is important because getting proper rest isn't just healthy for every aspect of our being, but also it can affect everything that we do, whether that's performing in the classroom, on the court, in the field, work, and pushing your limits in the gaming realm. If you're ever having a hard time sleeping, whether your mind is racing or you just have too much energy, it could be a lot of things, maybe a result of how the rest of your day was spent. If you have any natural energy at all, you'll have just too much pent up from sitting around all day. It's hard on your mind and body to not leave the house all day and get eight hours of gaming in and then sleep like a rock. It's just not 
not likely, especially consistently. This is where it's really great to clear your mind with something else and just get a little fresh air, whether that's a recreational activity like playing catch, tossing a frisbee, shooting a basketball, just walk around the block, through the woods, spending time in your yard or on your deck. It doesn't have to be for long. It doesn't have to be forced. You'll find yourself actually craving the fresh air and not to mention your legs and body really need some sort of movement for you to maintain a healthy blood circulation and joint lubrication. For specifically more direct sleep tips, uh, maybe you just need some white noise in the background like a fan running or perhaps you enjoy listening to some nature sounds like thunderstorm, the ocean. And, uh, that's always nice to put on quietly. If you're ever really struggling and just feel like you need to catch up, uh, just have a little melatonin, which is a naturally occurring chemical that your body already has, and this could help you get back on track for a night. Just don't use it all the time, so you and your body are able to naturally fall asleep on your own too. Great sleep and breaks, they clear your mind, they help you relax, and increase that body to mind connection. And this goes perfectly with our next two points. Number four, eating and drinking. So there are tens of thousands of theories out there of what your diet should consist of, and at the end of the day, what's important for everybody to understand, it's absolutely all about moderation. There are plenty of gamers that should probably just consider health like any other gaming stat. It's it's a wide spectrum. It's not like it's all or nothing, a zero to 100. Step one is just to simply drink water. Always have a bottle with you, whether it's in the game room, your work, or class. You just wanna always have one of these. Always. It'll make you feel way better. You'll be amazed at how much water you consume now that it's next to you and the benefits of drinking water are endless. Cooking your own food for some of you might sound overwhelming at first, but the fact is I guarantee that all of you have done something more impressive and difficult in the last 24 hours than what it takes to make healthy and great food. While this topic alone could be discussed for hours, my question to you is this. How did you figure out to move on the last time you were stuck or needed help in a game? You used Google or YouTube, right? Well, food is the same way, it's all there. There's tons of short little videos, very easy to make just about anything. To boil things down, I'll definitely show some examples that again, don't need to be followed exactly, but just use as reference and to keep things extremely simple. In general, your meals are best off just having a protein, a carb, and a fruit or vegetable. Many of these things are easy to make on a pan, but just like in gaming, there's always more to discover, like what you can do with an oven, or normally I use a toaster oven, a smoker, in an air fryer, the grill, or even the microwave for some of your friends frozen foods, of course. Don't be afraid to use your resources and learn about things you can make. And again, it's all about moderation. You are, say, eating fast food every single day of the week. If you simply cook for yourself three or four times a week, that's a drastic improvement. A lot of things really only take 10 to 20 minutes, and you can do things while your food is cooking on the pan. You don't need to stare at it. It doesn't take that long. My routine was always put breakfast on a pan, get dressed, maybe brush my teeth, whatever the order was here, and I'd come back and it's like almost done. So you don't need to stare at your food. You just put it on there, take it off when it's ready, that's it. I actually packed lunch every single day for my career. As some of you might remember seeing my giant box, it also functioned as a basic man purse at work. Again, I promise that if I ever didn't know how to make something, there's always an easy YouTube video to find on it. And just like many aspects of gaming, just a little practice is all you need. Number five, activity and exercise. Look, again, this is another one of those huge topics that a lot of people weigh big opinions on in every aspect, but again, so important to not feel overwhelmed because it's all about moderation. This used to be a big focus of my life as kinesiology was one of my fields of study in school. Plus I competed in eight seasons of track, four indoor, four outdoor. And that's a very high level of conditioning and strike training that I've made sure to take some of it with me for the rest of my life. I also have coaching experience in track, cross country and soccer. This is another topic though that can discourage or freak some people out just depending on their experience with it. But again, it's a spectrum. It's not like you either work out or you don't. You don't have to work out either four or five times a week or none at all. It doesn't work like that. In fact, there are studies that show participants of a variety of ages, even the elderly, accomplish huge results with only two sessions a week. Two, that's it. And they only take 40 minutes, an hour, that's it, twice a week. Lifting in particular is crucial for so many health aspects, bone density, heart health, muscular and joint health, coordination, Plus it's a huge stress reliever. So it ties into everything that we've already talked about. If you've ever just been feeling pissed off, angry, and like you're over everything, exercise, I promise. Not just for the long-term goals of functionality, shape, and health, but for the mood boost you get from the endorphins that naturally release during your workout. And ridding yourself of all of that pent up energy that you just don't need anymore. You can get it all out. Nothing that I do needs to be followed specifically, but just to keep things simple, I've been trying to lift just twice a week along with a more cardiovascular based session, which can be easier with a partner, friend, spouse, coworker, it doesn't matter, just a gym partner, but it's definitely still awesome on your own. One extremely simple tool that has really changed my life for the better is one of those doorway pull-up bars. Pull-ups are excellent for your back, 
arms, even your chest, and they honestly increased my quality of life because they actually relieved my back pain which used to be constantly nagging knots behind my shoulder blades. The excellent range of motion that stretches and strengthens, it's helped the pain disappear just about entirely, and these bothered me for years. Hanging while assisted or not is an amazing stretch for your whole back. It aids in spine decompression, and of course is great for your grip and forearm strength. I promise that not many things feel better than feeling rested, hydrated, getting through a great workout, going on a walk, enjoying a wonderful meal, and then sitting down for hours of purposeful gaming. Well guys, I hope that these five tips will not only help you enjoy gaming more, but life in general. And that's the whole point of this video, to help you feel your best, to do your best in every aspect of life. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I'll answer any questions the best I can if you have any in the comments. And I really look forward to seeing you for the next episode. I'm just feeling something fun and simple. Uh, maybe SSX tricky and uh, I look forward to seeing you again for the next video. Thanks again and have a great day.